Hi, I'm Jonathan, I'm here with Ignite. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the form of Pan's Labyrinth, one of the prescribed texts for the reimagined world's elective for Extension 1 English. We wanna be thinking here about how Del Toro pushes the boundaries of imagination with his filmic form. But before we do that, before we think about how not only Del Toro explores reimagined worlds through his content, but creates a reimagined world through his form, we want to lay some groundwork around what form is. Now, as extension students, you would probably be well aware <clears throat> of what literary or textual form entails, but just as a refresher, we want to be thinking as an entry point, what is the type of text? We want to be thinking, what are the unique features of that text type? And we also want to think about what style or genre is it composed in? We want to ask these questions of Pan's Labyrinth. So we know it's a film and therefore it's using these unique filmic features of editing, cinematography, mise-en-scene and sound. And specifically, it is a film that involves a generic fusion. It is both a fantasy film, a film in the fantasy genre, and also an historical drama. Not so much a docudrama, it's not depicting some very specific historical moment, but is more influenced by an historical reality from the past. So let's think about the fantasy genre and how Del Toro manipulates and implements some of the features, stylistic and conceptual, of the fantasy genre. It's primarily through this incorporation of mythological iconography, like the fawn, into his film. And he signals, through this mythological iconography, the film is some kind of fable. It's some kind of instructional message to an audience. We can think about how the film is this monument to the need for imagination and it reflects the power of imagination through its own imaginative disposition, through its own willingness to integrate fantasy and imagination into what is otherwise a film about a very brutal and dark moment in Spanish history. Now, what Del Toro also integrates as a function of this is what's called magical realism, which is pioneered by Latin American writers in the early, mid 20th century. Magical realism is a good term to use here because it denotes this synthesis of magical elements within an ordinarily realist setting and narrative. And so through this fusion, Del Toro indicates that no matter how dire or brutal or turbulent our world may be, it can always be reimagined. Now on this note, we also need to think about the function of the film as an historical drama. And I think because it's looking at this moment within Spanish history, using that as a backdrop for Ophelia's story and for this reimagined world, it stands as a figure of how literature and art and film has an ability to give us a very emotional rendition of the suffering of our temporal forebearers in a way that history books, textbooks, the sometimes clinical nature of empirical history can struggle to do. Ophelia's story may not have happened in real life, but it does stand as a figure of the many stories that we may never hear about because of the inhumanities of authoritarianism and tyranny. Now on a more specific level, the film involves some unique stylistic features. One of these is chiaroscuro lighting. So chiaroscuro lighting is the interplay of light and shadow. And we can see through not only the chiaroscuro lighting, but the primary colors that it uses, the insistence on either some very yellow, bright, almost filtered frames and some more washed out bluish hues in other parts of the film, the kind of conceptual competition that Del Toro is investigating. 
these sharp contrasts between colour and light, between yellow and blue, between light and shadow, uh, signifying these ideological competitors, these binaries within the thematic content of Del Toro's film. The, the unconquerable resilience of youth versus the callous defeatism of age. The contest between fascistic paternalism and liberated independence. The contest between the imaginary and the real. Another stylistic feature that Del Toro uses is parallel editing, which is where two scenes that are happening concurrently are intercut with each other. I think in the case of Pan's Labyrinth, this gives us a very kinetic portrait of the chaos in this world. A specific example is when the phalangists are seeking resistance fighters in the woods, which is intercut with Ophelia also being monitored and oppressed within the house that she resides in. And this illustrates how both within the natural world and the domestic space, there's no escape from the implications of violent patriarchy. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to subscribe for more videos. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.